Rub up your engines! Here I've got an easy repair, anyone can do themselves. In this case, it's a 2017 Kia Forte. The check engine light's coming on, it isn't running right. We'll open the hood, but thank goodness the check engine light is on. So rather than guess, we'll use a computer. I hooked it up the car, as you can see, it says PO301, cylinder one misfire detected. Now unfortunately, these PO codes are what are called generic codes. Lots of things can make an engine misfire. Could be the spark plug, could be the ignition coil, could be the wiring, could be the computer. And just don't think it's ignition system. You got a bad fuel injector that can make a car misfire. Gasket, intake gasket, head gasket on number one, that can make it misfire. But the absolute simplest thing to do is this. First, we'll take the stupid beauty cover off, get it out of the way, and here's the ignition coils. One, two, three, four. Now it says number one is misfiring, so we're gonna take that out. You just unscrew it. Sometimes they're hard to get out, so you wiggle them and unplug them. In this case, it's a dual system. They have to make it harder than normal, so you gotta click it up, then squeeze it to get it off. It won't come off if you don't push that up. The number two ignition coil. Get that out, wiggle it, pull it off, get the screwdriver, unlock the tab. There we go. Then we flip it over and squeeze it, <clears throat> off it comes. Then we'll do a simple test. We'll put number two in the number one hole, and number one in the number two hole. We'll put the bolts back in. You gotta make sure they're lined up. They gotta line up with their hole, and get them snug. And remember to plug them in. This one plugs in here, snap. This one plugs in there. We'll leave the top off, it's just a stupid beauty cover. Then we'll just push reset on the scan tool, and that resets it so there's no codes. Then we'll take it for a little drive. Well, I drive around, the light came back on, so that's good. Now we can check it. So we'll plug the working end in again. Here we go. See what it says. Here we go, it's gonna read it. Well, it's got one code, and the code is P0301. Misfire cylinder number one, so it's not the coil because it's still not firing right. Well, guess what? Now we're back to square one, but at least we didn't waste any money. We swapped the cause, but the misfire stayed where it was originally, so it's not the ignition coil. So put the coil back, take the other one off. So we're gonna check the spark plug, and lo and behold, the spark plug is loose. It's not in tight enough. We're gonna check it out anyway. It doesn't look bad, but who knows? Since this one's loose, we're gonna check them all, and I'll probably replace them anyway. Take them all out, see if any of them are loose too. Stick them in the spark plug holes. These are a little loose too. And put it all back together and see what happens. Make sure I put them in the right holes. This is the green one, that's number one. And now we're missing one, there it is, there's number two. And we'll hook all the cables up. One, two, those we didn't unhook, and then we'll bolt them all back in, all four of them. And we'll start her up again, see what happens. Well, it's running good now, so we'll take it for a road test and see what happens. And now I'm back, it's running fine, no check engine light. I did put in four new spark plugs, the old ones had gotten loose. But it's got 80,000 miles, so I put in new spark plugs, no more misfiring. And you might wonder, why did it only have a misfire on one cylinder, and not all of them if the spark plugs were worn out? Well, even though it's a machine, things don't necessarily wear evenly. In this case, the number one spark plug got looser and wore more than the other spark plugs did. But you're gonna change them, change them all. Don't go through the trouble of guessing here and there. Change all four of them, make sure they're nice and snug, so they don't get loose again and it won't have misfires. In this case, just a misfire on one cylinder, not on the others. Eventually, you probably would have done them all, but we want to fix cars. So when you fix them, fix them right. If one's bad, change them all. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Gary23 says, what's the craziest customer you've ever had? This uh, woman that I had years ago, I worked on her car and then she didn't like it because she took the car to the dealer and they said, oh, well, he destroyed your car. So I said, well, what do you mean? Is it working? Oh, it's working fine. But they said, you destroyed my car. I'm like, it's working, right? I fixed it. And they wanted 2,500 bucks at the dealer to fix it. And I fixed it for 500. But of course, you know, she was a little on the crazy side. So I just said, okay, I'll give you your money back, your 500 bucks. <laughs> so I gave her a check and I get a call from my bank. 
And the bank says, this lady has a check that you wrote to her, but she refuses to sign it, to endorse it. And I said, well, she, I know she's a little on the crazy side, but I didn't realize she was that crazy. They told me that she said she was worried that I was going to get her signature on the check that I get back. Like, I guess she thought I was some kind of voodoo doctor, that if I had her signature, I could do something to her. I don't know. But that was hands down the craziest person I ever dealt with in the car repair business. And needless to say, I never dealt with her again. <laughs> Rodriguez 95 says, Scotty, I was wondering if you have a clue what's going on. Every morning I start my 2016 Nissan Altima makes a rattle for seven seconds and goes away. Odds are you got a problem with your timing change. A lot of times the tensioners don't work right. When you start your car up, of course, everything's got slack because there's no oil pressure. Well, the timing chain is pushed in by the tensioner that uses oil pressure. And when they age, a lot of times they'll rattle right on start up and then stop doing it. Have a mechanic look at that because if that is the case, it's best to fix it now before something breaks and then the timing chain slips and then you're really up the creek without a paddle. It might need just a tensioner. You could have that done. Have the chain checked too because if you got a lot of miles, sometimes they stretch and then you got to replace the chain. But get it looked at because you don't want that chain breaking on an interference engine like that. It costs a fortune if it breaks at all. Pistons will hit the valves and pretty much say goodbye engine. Toyota Honda 1999 says I got a 99 Civic 5 speed with 145,000 miles. When I shut it off, it makes a weird noise every few minutes for about 20 minutes. It's quiet but noticeable. Well, I want to hear the noise so you can make a video. I'll listen to it. Go ahead and post it. If it's like little clackly noises, that's the exhaust system. It gets hot and as it cools down, they'll often make clacky noises. Now, if it's not that and you do hear some noise, here's something you can try is open the gas cap. Take the gas cap off. Listen inside. If you hear it in there, it's the fuel pump. Sometimes as they age, the systems get a little weird. They send power to the fuel pump and the thing will be turning itself on and off. And if that's the case, you could have a bad fuel pump relay, could have a bad ignition switch. Lots of things can still send power to the fuel pump. But make a video let me listen to it because that's the best way I can tell by hearing it. Music says, Scotty, I got a 96 Volvo 850, 285,000 miles. Whenever I'm at a stoplight, the engine rumbles loud to the point the interior shakes. Any ideas? Okay, that thing's old as the hills. You want to start with the basics. Check the spark plugs, the air filter. Funny, yeah, that's one. Then listen for vacuum leaks. Your air sucking, that'll make it rumble. Too. Also, check the motor mounts. It's got 285,000 miles. You're stopped and it's rumbling. <clears throat> Drive. But you put it in neutral and the rumbling stops. That's often just the transmission is worn, the torque converter is worn, and it strains the engine too much. And in that case, hey, if you can shift it to neutral and it stops rumbling, do that for a while. I got plenty of customers who do that with older cars. They'll often wear internally. You're not going to rebuild a transmission, put a torque converter in for something that's just shaking when it's got 285,000 miles. But check all the other stuff first. Tune-up, vacuum leaks, motor mounts. Could easily be one of those, too. Well, if you think speeding in cars kills, you're right. And you might find it interesting that the top most dangerous place that you're going to get killed in a car wreck are not necessarily the biggest city. Out of the top 15, only one of them has more than a million people. Guess what the top one is? North Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, isn't that a surprise? Then comes Irving, Texas, just outside of Dallas. I always say people in Dallas drive like maniacs. Then, of all things, comes Cleveland, Ohio. Then Fontana, California, and Plano, Texas. Washington, D.C. comes up on the list. Other than Cleveland, relatively wide open. I guess you can go a lot faster. You get in more wrecks. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, snow versus ice because there's warm places on there. There's cold places on there. It's kind of interesting to see which places are the most dangerous ones to drive. Uh, I'd expect Chicago. That's on the list too. Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, I kind of see that because I was there a few years back. It's got gridlock really bad and people drive like maniacs there. I was taking an Uber and the guy happened to be a Nigerian driver, but he'd been here for like 17 years. On the highway, he'd get off at the exit, but wouldn't take off, and then he'd come right back on, on the merge on the other side. And people were honking and beeping at him. He didn't care. <laughs> the people there were, I mean, it was a madhouse. So it doesn't surprise me there's a bunch of people dying in car wrecks in Charlotte because of the messy traffic situation that they have. <laughs> when they get a chance to go fast, they do. <laughs> I know that from experience. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.